Hello. My name is Dr. Francois Ricard. I am an osteopath and a PhD. I am director of the International Madrid School of Osteopathy, EOM, and president of the Scientific European Federation of Osteopaths, SCFO. In this video, I want to talk to you about the effects of spinal manipulation in case of neurological sensitization. Part 1. Part 1. This series of videos will look at the scientific literature surrounding the mechanisms of spinal manipulations, mostly used by osteopaths and chiropractors. In these videos, we will study the mechanical mechanisms of action, action in disc hernias, and the effects they have on the peripheral and central nervous systems, the neuromuscular, biological, neurovegetative systems and on the organs. In this video, we are reviewing the neurophysiological effects of spinal manipulation in case of central sensitization. A few reminders on pain and neurologic sensitization. Normal sensation, Wolf, 2016. The somatosensory system is organized such that the highly specialized primary sensory neurons, that encode low intensity stimuli only activate those central pathways that lead to innocuous sensations, while high intensity stimuli that activate nociceptor S only activate the central pathways that lead to pain, and the two parallel pathways do not functionally intersect. This is mediated by the strong synaptic inputs between the sensory inputs and pathways, and inhibitory neurons that focus activity to these dedicated circuits. In the normal sensation, the somatosensory system is organized in separate, parallel pathways, such that low intensity stimuli only activate the central pathways that lead to innocuous sensations such as touch, whereas high intensity stimuli that activate nociceptors only activate the central pathways that lead to pain. This effect is mediated by the strong synaptic inputs between the sensory pathways, and by inhibitory neurons that focus activity to these dedicated circuits. Neuronal Activity in Physiological Process, D'Alessandro et al., 2016 These figures show the antithetic processes and relative outcomes, occurring in physiological process after a stimulus noxious stimuli, inflammation, wound, trauma, activates the nociceptive afferents, box A. Physiologically, antidromic activation of C fibers, the so-called neurogenic inflammation, and specific autonomic efferences, box B, sustain peripheral healing process restoring both homeostasis and physiological ongoing interoceptive centrifugal communication between periphery and central nervous system, box C. In normal conditions, according to Ella Smith et al. 2018, an acute stressor will signal the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus to release corticotropin releasing factor into the hypophyseal portal veins, which causes the anterior pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. Circulating X signals the adrenal cortex to release glucocorticoids, that have downstream metabolic effects. A negative feedback loop is established to turn off activation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, by suppressing the production of corticotropin releasing factor, and act upon cessation of the initial stressor. The hippocampus, and the amygdala, play inhibitory and excitatory roles in regulation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, respectively. The corticotropin releasing factor, released upon hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis activation, also has peripheral effects. Mast cells can become activated by corticotropin-releasing factor, 
causing the release of cytokines and growth factors that have reciprocal interactions with peripheral nociceptors. Nociceptor activation signals through the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, leading to activation of supraspinal somatosensory brain regions. The descending pain pathway also plays a role in the regulation of painful experiences. Denslow et al. 1947 were among the first to study the phenomenon of central nerve facilitation in osteopathy. The patterns that they observed indicate that motor neurons can be maintained in a state of facilitation because of sensory bombarding of the related paravertebral structures. Erwin Core and the Consequences of Spinal Cord Facilitation Denslow, Core and Krems, 1947, indicate that motor reflex thresholds are related to pain thresholds, which suggests that some sensory pathways in the abnormal segment are also sensitized or facilitated. Mechanical stimuli below the threshold may trigger pain if the central neurons are sensitized. Central sensitization refers to the modification of neural thresholds in the spinal cord and or the reduction of cortical inhibition of pain. Central sensitization is an increase in the excitability of neurons in the central nervous system so that normal stimuli begin to produce abnormal reactions. Unlike other sensory stimuli, Peripheral nociceptor impulse trains can trigger long-term circuits in the central nervous system and can cause prolonged states of hypersensitivity. In central sensitization, according to Ella Smith et al. 2018, with the induction of central sensitization in somatosensory pathways, with increases in synaptic efficacy and reductions in inhibition, a central amplification occurs, enhancing the pain response to noxious stimuli in amplitude, duration, and spatial extent. While the strengthening of normally ineffective synapses recruits subliminal inputs, such that inputs in low threshold sensory inputs can now activate the pain circuit, the two parallel sensory pathways converge. The pain response to noxious stimuli is enhanced, hyperalgesia, whereas the sensitivity of the normally ineffective convergent synapses is strengthened, allowing low threshold sensory inputs to activate the pain circuit, allodynia. According to Cook et al., 1987, central facilitation, also known as central sensitization, refers to an increase in excitability, or an enhanced capacity in the dorsal horn neurons, to respond to an afferent input. Central facilitation can manifest as an increase in spontaneous central neuron activity, caused by improved discharging of the central neurons, in response to an afferent input, or as a change in the properties of the receptive field of the central neurons. Central Sensitization, Wolf, 2016 Chronic early life, or adult stress, leads to alteration in limbic regulation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. This is due to increased corticotropin releasing factor expression, and drive from the amygdala, 1, and decreased glucocorticoid receptor and brain-derived neurotrophic factor expression in hippocampus, which dampens inhibition, too. These changes ultimately lead to increased corticotropin-releasing factor release from the hypothalamus, 3, increased and prolonged release of ACTH after cessation of the stressor, 4, and increased glucocorticoid production, 5 with decreased negative feedback at higher structures. Increased corticotropin-releasing factor release leads to greater mast cells activation and infiltration, 6, 
leading to enhanced peripheral nociceptor interaction. 7. The neurological sensitization, according to D'Alessandro et al., 2016. In the right column, pink boxes, lacking resolution of peripheral inflammation, sustains no susceptive afferents, with a consecutive amplification of centrifugal phenomena, boxes C and D, that can become maladaptive or neurotoxic. Cassanthus and Sandgula, 2014. This central nervous system vicious cycle, box F, could support peripheral sensitization, 1, and central sensitization, 2, as well as an ever ending self maintenance inflammation state, 3, box G. According to Gay et al., 2013, the joints are innervated by nociceptors that respond to noxious joint movements, and are the endings of unmyelinated afferential fibers. They are stimulated in the presence of factors released by tissue de mag, and can be sensitized by local inflammation of the joint. Nociceptors receive local stimuli, and transform them into action potentials. These are transmitted through the primary sensory fibers to the central nervous system. The fibers of the nociceptors have their cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglia. Peripheral sensitization consists of a reduction in the response threshold, and an increase in the reactivity of the peripheral endings of nociceptors, the high threshold peripheral sensory neurons that transfer the influx from the peripheral nerves through the peripheral targets, skin, muscle, joints and viscera, to the central nervous system, spinal cord and brain stem. Peripheral sensitization is the result of modifications of the major proteins and ion channels, known as transduction proteins, that determine the excitability of the terminal nociceptor. It indicates that the extension of nociception occurs in tissues innervated by the peripheral nervous system. According to Grosser et al., 2017, in case of nociception, peripheral, and central sensitization, inflammation, such as arthritis of the knee, induces peripheral and central sensitization of the nociceptive system. These processes involve upregulation of COX-2, and production of PGE2 in inflamed tissue, and the spinal cord. PGE2 signaling through prostaglandin E receptors, lowers the activation threshold of pain-sensing ion channels on nociceptors, and facilitates signal transduction to the brain, primary hyperalgesia. PGE2 diffusing within the spinal cord, contributes to the widening of the pain receptive field, secondary hyperalgesia. At the presynaptic level, PGE2 facilitates the spinal release of the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate, substance P, or calcitonin gene-related peptide, resulting in enhanced nociceptive processing. At the postsynaptic level, PGE2 directly activates dorsal horn neurons, enhances AMPA, R, and NMDAR activity, or blocks inhibitory glycinergic neurotransmission. According to Dure et al., 2017, mechanism of peripheral versus central sensitization, includes an activation of peripheral nociceptors on the skin in response to stimuli, such as heat, injury, or mechanical pressure, initiates the release of chemical mediators at the site of injury, peripheral sensitization. Persistent pain, or inflammation causes activation, and repetitive firing in afferent C fiber nociceptors, which triggers the release of excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate, in the synapse of the dorsal horn, central sensitization. This is accompanied by the release of substance P, brain-derived neurotropic factor, and neurokinins, 
which causes persistent depolarization of the cell membrane. Additionally, activation of AMPA, or NMDA receptors, by glutamate, stimulates the microglia, and subsequently induces the release of cyclooxygenase enzymes 1 and 2, nitric oxide, and other pro-inflammatory mediators, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukins 1 and 6. Brain plasticity and central sensitization. Repeated stimulation causes neurotransmitter levels and electrical signals in the brain to change, as neurons develop a memory to respond to these signals. Frequent stimulation results in a stronger brain memory, so that the brain responds more quickly and effectively, when it will test the same stimulation. These resulting changes in the brain, are designated under the name of nerve plasticity, or central sensitization. According to Gustin et al., 2012, the somatosensory cortex remodels in response to sensory deprivation, with regions deprived of input invaded by neighboring representations. How to do the neurological sensitization diagnosis? The degree of cortical reorganization is correlated with ongoing pain intensity, which has led to the assumption that chronic pain conditions are invariably associated with somatosensory cortex reorganization. Because the presentation and etiology of chronic pain vary, we determined whether cortical changes in human subjects are similar for differing pain types. Using functional and anatomical MRI, Gustin et al. 2012, found that, while human patients with neuropathic pain displayed cortical reorganization, and changes in somatosensory cortex activity, patients with non-neuropathic chronic pain did not. Furthermore, cortical reorganization in neuropathic pain patients was associated with changes in regional anatomy. These data, by showing that pain per se is not associated with cortical plasticity, suggest that treatments aimed at reversing cortical reorganization, should only be considered for use in patients with certain types of chronic pain. Central sensitization manifests as pain hypersensitivity, particularly dynamic tactile allodynia, secondary punctate or pressure hyperalgesia, after sensations, and enhanced temporal summation. Studies in clinical cohorts, Wolf, 2011, reveal changes in pain sensitivity that have been interpreted as revealing an important contribution of central sensitization to the pain phenotype in patients with fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, musculoskeletal disorders with generalized pain hypersensitivity, headache, temporomandibular joint disorders, dental pain, neuropathic pain as sciatica, visceral pain hypersensitivity disorders, and post-surgical pain. The diagnosis according to NACE, 2014, includes important questions in case of musculoskeletal pain, disproportionate pain experience. If the answer is no, there is no sensitization. Diffuse pain distribution. If not there is no sensitization. If the answer is yes to both questions, use the central sensitization. If the inventory is greater than or equal to 40, there is sensitization. The central sensitization inventory is a self-report outcome measure, designed to identify patients who have symptoms, that may be related to central sensitization, or central sensitivity syndromes. Each question may be answered as follows. Never. 0 points. Rarely, 1 point. Sometimes, 2 points. Often, 3 points. Or always, 4 points. Total points reflect the severity of the central sensitization.
The central sensitization inventory consists of two parts. Part A, includes 25 questions related to common central sensitization symptoms. Part B, determines if the patient has been diagnosed with certain central sensitization disorders, or related disorders, such as anxiety and depression. Following is a breakdown of score ranges, and the intensity of central sensitization they represent. Subclinical, 0 to 29. Mild, 30 to 39. Moderate, 40 to 49. Severe, 50 to 59. Extreme, 60 to 100. Meyer et al., 2012. Found the central sensitization inventor has strong psychometric properties. Test retest reliability equals 0.817. Kronbach self equals 0 0.879. A 2014 study by Neblet et al. found the central sensitization inventory accurately identified 82.8% .8 of participants as having central sensitization, whereas 54.8% participants were correctly identified as not having central sensitization. However, this study also found that the likelihood of false positives increases when the central sensitization inventory is used on patients who have both complex pain and psychophysiological disorders. These two tables, A and B, show us the questions of the central sensitization inventory for the diagnosis. End of part 1